welcome Natalie Egan to Inside Check. Hi, Natalie. Yay! Hello. You're here. You're here. Thanks for having me. So we actually passed our Inside Check with Natalie because Ooh. I will say that when Natalie received an invitation to appear on Inside Check from Lisa, she she sent me a message and she was like, is this real <laughs> or is this oh, yeah. a fishing oh. thing? I thought it was <laughs> an elaborate fishing attempt so i'm not sure <laughs> so i'm not sure if you guys get those emails that are like clearly fishing attempts i do hit the fishing attempt it sends you like this fun little pop-up like yeah you got us like good job for yeah. catching that and so i received this email like hey we're talking about this thing do you want to do this thing and i was like mm, this sounds like an elaborate fishing attempt but they named ah. like both of you so i was like that would be really Really in depth. So, yeah, that, but, I know. would be honored if I was part of a fishing attempt, but well, I don't think we're that that big time yet. But you only know, in time. Maybe my mind after is this trying interview. to come up with like a fish the band joke as well as a fishing ah. like mm -hmm. metaphor yeah. here, but it's coming up. Yeah. So I think I rolled pretty poor. I rolled a one. Uh, oh, on that well, yeah, makes yeah. sense. Well, Terrible. we're glad that you didn't report us, and <laughs> <laughs> we're glad that, you're, that you're here. here. Uh, so, yeah, you joined the team uh, within the last year, right? Yeah, just barely over a year ago. Oh. Wow. Yeah. So, so we have not I've, met face-to-face. -face. <laughs> uh, I've met my manager twice face-to-face, -face. and so that's really? been fun. Yeah. I've, I've never met my not manager. Once. Not once. No. <laughs> but that's amazing. Yeah, so I mean, we're I know. In a strange, strange time. Mm -hmm. uh, but you came on as a uh, as a product manager, and you're doing lots of fun stuff that you can't really talk about, right? I know there's so much fun stuff coming out, like in the very soon future, that I wish I could say. I'm very, I'm hyped. I feel like uh, Shelly especially keeps hearing how hyped I am about a certain <laughs> product. I know <laughs> you were very excited, and I almost said it, and then I was like, "Oh wait, we know we haven't talked about that yet." <laughs> <laughs> Could have ruined it all. Yes, but you and I get to work together on a lot of things um, because I work with a lot of the product managers. But I know what you do. Greg knows what you do. But people listening might really not understand the role of a product manager. Yeah. yeah. So, Would you tell us? And that's yeah. fair. Uh, product managers do a lot of things. We wear a lot of hats. Uh, but basically, we help... Uh, come up with product ideas, help develop ideas that are thrown out there. We really help set the product vision and strategy and find the you know business reasons behind why to move forward with some of these products. And uh, then once everything is rolling, as you guys know, like there's a million pieces and people that go into making our amazing products. Uh, so I really try to be an information conduit because I want to keep the creative folks just focused on doing what they do best and being creative. I want you marketers to be able to keep moving forward and doing your marketing, sales and operations folks to be able to keep moving forward and doing all their stuff. So any product information, I help spread it to the masses. Anyone who needs it, I want to be that go-to person. And I just keep keep things moving forward. Nice. Plus, yeah. Well, I got a 13 there, and my insight check is uh, plus four. So, yeah, that all checks out. I, I believe you. Yeah. yeah it's good. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, don't 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 try to don't try to slip anything by us, Natalie. Because we are so it, we are checking. It, it's different than a designer, right? Like you you can you know you're not necessarily coming up with uh, the ins and outs of mechanics, but you do sometimes come forth with like the concepts, right? Right, right. So it's like, hey, we need a book about dragons. You know, hey, <laughs> now there's there's fizzbends. I didn't come up with that, by the way. But that's just gonna <laughs> that's be the my example. example. Yeah, no. And a product that I'm very hyped is coming out because I love dragons so much. Nice. Uh, do you like dungeons as well? <laughs> not as much, but you know, <laughs> <laughs> worth it. It's worth it on your worth way to it. get to those those dragons. <laughs> sometimes. Yes, absolutely. Yeah. So you, also, yeah, you get to work closely with. Game designers everyone. with everyone, everyone, really. But like they, um, you know, if they yep. say, well, guess what, Natalie? Uh, I wrote 40 extra pages. And then, and I you, go, no. then you're like, oh, I don't think that's gotta, actually going to work. <laughs> yeah. Then I go, that doesn't fit the product strategy and it affects the PL. 
Yeah, so can't move forward in that direction. But and then you can. And we've help. also hired an editor who will be editing those forty pages <laughs> down. <laughs> they cannot slip things by you. Never. As well, once. they will try. And then people like me ask you pro- like the same question probably like three times a week. Like, how many pages is this? How many pages? <laughs> Wait, Tell me so the key selling points. Yeah, what what's in this one? Again? When how are we, we announcing it? Yeah. So how can some, we make it awesome? That's one of our really fun things that we get to do together sometimes is to um, try to write the the selling point, like how to make like, these are the things we think are super exciting and here's how to say that. And then usually we just say, Jeremy, can you write this for us? <laughs> <laughs> Trade, <Yeah>. secrets. <laughs> Trade secrets. Jeremy mm. does everything. He, <laughs> yes, um. <laughs> he's also, we, I mean, we don't want to lie and misrepresent. So we do actually have to. Talk to our game designers yeah. once in a while. Jeremy Crawford, as yeah. lead rules developer, wants to know uh, that make sure that we're it, the way we're describing said rules is uh, yeah. consistent, which is exactly. Awesome. Well, that and you know, with the key selling points, you don't want to like give away too much. To you mm-hmm. got to keep it kind of, kind of. Yeah, we like kind of. So it's just like, how do you tease it out and tell enough information without giving away all the milk? And that's also hard because sometimes it changes, right? Like sometimes. The things that are the key selling points uh, can be like, oh, but by the way, that's not in this anymore. And so like you have to be vague but also exciting at the same time. Yes, yes. It's a fun dance. It's a fun fun, uh, high wire tightrope to walk. What you're used to doing uh, as a gamer, right? You've been playing, you know, D&D but also, uh, you know, PC games for a long time, right? That is true. Uh, I always like to call myself a child of fifth edition. So I started playing D&D right as fifth edition came out. Um, I actually learned to play. There was an in-store event up at Cafe Mox in Ballard. Uh, So I went, I did the learn to play event and I, I was hooked. I was like, why haven't I been playing this game my entire life? This game is for me. Um, But yeah, when I'm, when I'm not playing D&D, I play a lot of, uh, RPGs and I'm very into 4X strategy games lately. Oh, nice! What are you playing that in that strategy genre? Uh, so I've <laughs> just hit 600 hours in Civilization VI, which is probably just too much. Uh, I was just recently introduced to the game Stellaris, which oh. is very similar but space themed. Um, they're good. They're good for me. I That's love awesome. exploring, exploiting expanding and exterminating <laughs> and alliteration oh yes alliteration is my favorite now i want to i'm checking out my my hours played in civ 6 i'm at 1024 okay See, you so i don't to have go. to feel weird about You're my not 600 weird. hours you gotta waste to go. <laughs> yeah. is that like a badge of honor in these games or is that like i feel like that's that's kind of like the equivalent of like why they don't have clocks and windows and casinos like i don't want to know how long i've been here <laughs> like yeah. Why are you well, telling I mean, me how long I've played? Yeah, it's fun. It's fun. It's just a good reminder to, you know, go outside sometimes. There's a whole whole world out there. It's a there. whole new world that you can explore and exploit, and exploit. as well. <laughs> and <laughs> in real life. In. <laughs> Hopefully not exterminate. <laughs> Opposite of what I want to do. Oh, so I when love you all win, those games too, man. So yeah, I, I, hear, I, I hear Greg talk about They're them. Good. Oh, so good. Um, when you went to go to Cafe Mox, did you go specifically because you wanted to go to that Learn to Play D&D event? I did. Not yeah. even knowing one day that you were going to work on the brand. No idea, but I fell in love with D&D. Uh, strangely, my career also evolved into this product management route. And uh, basically for a year before I was hired, I was stalking the Wizards like, career page, just <laughs> waiting oh. for... For a job to pop up that I thought that I could apply for, and here I am. So really, just like yeah, going to that learn to play event seven years ago, really changed the course of my life, and here I am. That's pretty amazing. It really did, yeah. That's, That's similar to what I, I think I went to the learn to play event for fourth edition. Uh, uh, the encounters program, of course. Right? Yeah, exactly. And uh, I had been playing the beta and stuff like that, but I often think about that event at the complete strategist in a basement in Manhattan uh, as like the the catalyst for where, where I ended up too. And so it's crazy mm-hmm. how like one, you can sometimes trace everything back to like one event or one thing that you did. Yeah, definitely. I don't know if it's true though, but 
No, yeah, okay, it was a nine, but I, 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 I feels right. Yeah. Did you add your bonus though? No, yeah. So that's thirteen, unlucky thirteen. I don't know. We'll not see. as good as last time. I'm not sure yeah. if it's going to work or not. Um, and one of the things Natalie and I talk about a lot is dungeon mastering because I don't do it. Um, but like teaching, like that's something that we both feel pretty strongly about is mm-hmm. how we can onboard new dungeon masters slowly and easily and, and give them the tips that they need to be successful in their endeavors. But Yeah, it's it's an overwhelming thing. So part of what I'm trying to do is just really break it down to just a step-by-step chill we're all just here storytelling with each other. We're all just here to have fun. We're all here yeah. to have fun. So I, are you a dungeon master? Uh, you, I am mostly a player. You're mostly a player. Okay, that's that's right. That's and, what I thought. And I feel like that mostly comes from my partner is the like forever, stereotypical forever DM. So even when I mention like, hey, maybe I'll do this one. He's like, mm, maybe not. So. <laughs> <laughs> uh, I'm going to do that one. Yeah. Maybe yeah. I'll just keep doing this one <laughs> right now. Um, and what what about your characters? Is there like a, a particular type of character you gravitate towards? Uh, so my last character is a warlock and I love her. There's something so fun about being a warlock because I feel like you can be kind of bad, but like not bad. Yeah. Um, it's just I'm bad. Just very, I like just, it. Yeah. You can just like kind of be bad in a fun not hurtful way. You can kind of be bad because you were forced to, but you were forced because you were actually trying to do something good. Right. Exactly. Like, it's exactly. that's kind of how I I I think about it. Mm-hmm. <laughs> but yeah, no, I love my warlock. Uh love playing a barbarian also. There's something wow. very fun about raging. Which maybe that goes back to the whole like I also like being a little bad. Like I also like yeah. raging. <laughs> Yeah, all of these parts of myself that I don't get to express in real life, I do it at the table. Have you always had this like uh, the barbarian love, or was that something that happened within like the last year? Say uh, it. It <laughs> happened over time. I feel like okay. a lot of my starting characters were, you know, wizard, sorcerer, and then I don't know. It just kind of evolved into I can be so much more than a spellcaster sitting in the back. Like maybe I want to tank. Maybe I want to swing some battle axes. Who Embrace knows? the rage. Embrace the rage. Ooh, I like that. Yeah, yeah. You can have it. it can be your cool. get that my new tagline. Uh, carved <laughs> onto you'll see it in my e- an axe. My email. <laughs> my email. Line. Natalie again, product manager. I, th- I thought Shelly, you were gonna add, the reason why she was being a barbarian was because she started working with us, and she was like, "There's just so much more rage involved." <laughs> yeah, I'm just so so angry all the time. I just really need an outlet for that. No, no, not at all. Never. Uh, well, my daughter was just here, and she is chomping at the bit to dungeon master. Uh, oh, it's sim- you know, and I, I I think there's just so much uh, there to be able to to mine. Uh, how how do we get kids to play? Uh, Dungeons and Dragons. I feel like it should come like maybe almost easier to kids because I feel like one of my favorite things about being a kid was just being able to play make believe with my friends. Just like that's just what we did. So it's just being like, hey, anything that happens here is all right. Just feel free to play. Like be yourself, play, let loose. I feel like, like that there too. is no wrong answer. Like, your party goes left and you wanted them to go right, like that's okay. Shelly? I hear that now. I got it. I get it. When people say, I feel like that's happened like three times recently. I feel like those are direct call outs for you. Now. I do. I think it's like you're all just vessels of the universe and the universe <laughs> is like, say this to her. So I'll keep repeating the same mantra to her. Um, <laughs> but if I were a child, then yes, I probably would have uh, just come to it more naturally. I b- fully believe we should be training kids to be dungeon masters from a very early age um, because it's it's good for them. It is good for them to to feel that somewhat in control, but yeah. also um, in like a safe, confined way. And mm-hmm. like, here, you know what? You don't really get to be the boss at anything when you're six, but like here as the dungeon master, you can. Like you can yeah. actually tell mommy and daddy that traffic. we didn't, yeah. yeah, we didn't get to do the thing we wanted to do. And, and also kids are such natural storytellers. It's just... Mm-hmm. And they like to do the voices and they can do the characters. And I just think 
it's it's a role that they we always think about when we play D&D with them is like well they're going to be a character I'm going to make them a character and I'm going to be their DM but lately I have been thinking I might have approached this wrong with my own kid and like maybe we should have been like let's play D&D you are the dungeon master <laughs> maybe yeah maybe that should be their first entry point has he DM'd I mean like basically his whole life is a as a dungeon master because he is just like bossy and telling us what to do most of the time. <laughs> I have to say, and it he rolls high, high. It is a highlight of many meetings when he comes in and makes makes an appearance. When he insisted on telling you guys a joke today, yeah, it was really yeah, good. yeah, he was like, "I'm not going to camp until you unmute and let me tell this damn joke." <laughs> Already in charge. Already in charge. Uh, yes. I love it. That's what yep. Dungeon Mastering is all about. <laughs> yeah. Collaboration. Yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, and I'm so glad you're here and collaborating with us and making all of the things that we can't talk about yet, but I'm very excited Soon. for it. Soon. Soon. Yeah. I just got the a meeting notification for a meeting that Natalie and I will be in, in five minutes about something that we can't talk about, but um, it's going to yeah. be. I got to say, 2020 next year is going to be really big and really exciting for um, products coming out. Yeah, yeah. If you like like a lot of D&D things, 2022 is your year, friends. Yeah. Not not to mention 2021 and 2020 and 2019. What year are we in? I actually did have time to. Get, is, you know, I was a little confused. Like, wait, 2022 is. is that the next year? I couldn't wait, remember for a minute. <laughs> is time an illusion? Oh yeah, I guess it is. Yeah, roll the twenty. Natalie yeah. tells no lies. <laughs> it's true. It's she is true. a truth teller. Well, you have passed your insight check for us, Natalie. Uh, very excited that you are are here and uh, are being somewhat truthful. So that's good. <laughs> somewhat truthful. <laughs> Only time will tell. <laughs> that's right. Awesome. Uh, well, thanks for coming on. And, uh, yeah, thanks. Natalie. Always good hey, to chat thanks. with you. All right, guys. See you later. Bye. Bye. Bye.